welcome to another session of DevLive. I'm your host, Javed Mohammed, here at Oracle Code Singapore. And I have as my guest today, Anand Raghunathan, who is a VP of uh, Solutions and, uh, at, at, uh, uh, and the co-founder at Unscramble. Indeed. Okay. Thanks for Anand, your time, Javed. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. I'm glad to you be here. You mentioned you're based outside of New York? Yep, in All Connecticut, right. actually. Okay, Connecticut. But come here often. <laughs> so uh, okay, okay. How was that? What route did you take to get here? <laughs> Via Hong Kong. Via uh, Hong Kong. But yeah. So long flight. <laughs> but I think in a few months, the uh, Singaporean is starting a direct flight, I think, from New York to Singapore. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> for like, like a 19 hour flight. So we'll see. I think they started at one time before, but it was so long, uh, I don't think yeah. they have discontinued. Yeah, they discontinued it. Anyway, <laughs> so, okay. So thank you for coming over. You have a session de developing personalized and contextual chatbots. So. Yes. Chatbots are the kind of the one of the hot technologies of, of our t of our time. Yep. Do you want to give us a little perspective of why chat? First of all, why chatbots, and then we will kind of get into your, your right. talk. So we look at chatbots as a channel for either customers or for internal employees to communicate with with the company in some way or the other. Mm -hmm. And uh, the nice thing about chatbot is that it's conversational. Uh -huh. So we can have a nice back and forth, which is very useful for certain kinds of uh, marketing, sales, troubleshooting use cases. And second, which I think is pretty cool, is history. Because mm -hmm. very often, the one reason why I like to use chat interfaces is I can go back and see what I told somebody five months back mm -hmm. and say exactly the conversation. So that history is very useful when I want to look back and see how I solved the problem before or what answer came before. So those, I think, are two very cool features of chatbots that distinguish it from just a plain web app. Okay. So and, and what about text versus voice? Is the one better suited? In, in so the most of the use cases we are tackling are more uh, text-based because uh, most of our customers are either banks, telcos, and uh, insurance companies and so on, where where uh, because of security privacy reasons, voice may not be always the best means of asking a question. So for instance, we support use cases like, uh, uh, what is my current balance? Or, or send a payment to somebody, or recommend a new investment product for me. Most of those tend to be better on text because maybe you don't want an answer back on you know, voice saying you know, your current balance is $200,000 or something. Yeah. So right now we're focusing on text, but I think voice is going to come very soon. Maybe in some situations, like within cars or some places, yeah. it's going to uh, I mean, be applicable. I mean, one thing that I've noticed just calling customer service is a lot of them tend to be vo voice-based uh, chatbots. I mean, they'll, you know, uh, uh, they'll ask you the reason for your call or so, something. That, and they never get it right, by the way. Right. <laughs> and that kind of is probably maybe a good segue mm -hmm. into context base and some of the things Correct. that you talk so you want to talk a little bit about that yeah so we feel that today most chatbots tend to be very uh, simplistic so in the sense that they focus more on the interaction itself just the uh, getting a message from the customer or a user understanding it in a very shallow way and sending a response back but so we think a chatbot product is not just the just the interface but also the intelligence maintaining a rich profile of a customer mm -hmm. So, and that profile co could come from, could use data or attributes from various sources, not just the chat, could be integrated with the CRM systems, could be integrated with the ERP systems, could be integrated with your raw transaction data. So, for instance, when you work with banks and chatbots, uh, we deploy a platform where we, in real time, in t uh, send, say, ATM da transaction data, credit card transaction data, account activity data use all the information to populate our own 360 de degree view for a customer. Mm -hmm. And that profile of that 360 de degree view is now used in the conversation with the customer. Mm -hmm. So when a customer has an issue, let's w one of the use cases we support is a customer can say, uh, my ATM card is stuck at the ATM machine. That's a uh, so when they say that, we actually can tell the customer, oh, we actually noticed, say, three invalid PIN attempts at, uh, at the ATM machine mm -hmm. at Marina Bay Sands. Can you confirm your other ATM? So that's the kind of interaction we can support because we are ingesting ATM data in real time. We know that the customer, like maybe a minute back, had three internet pin attempts. We already know that he's having an issue with his ATM card. So if he does reach to the chatbot, we already know everything about him. So th now the conversation is much simpler. Instead of the customer explaining where he is, what just happened, we already can solve the problem mm -hmm. much more quickly. 
So those are the kind of interactions we want to support, where using context about a customer, not just from the chat, but from any external or internal source, using the context, we can now power much more intelligent and uh, uh, superior conversations with the customer. Okay. So, so when you're talking about that, I'm thinking of the cultural dimensions to this. So people, I mean, just societies, you know, that are low context cultures, that are high context <laughs> cultures, so a lot of things are just implied. Some of it is, uh, you know, I mean, in the world of communication, what is it they say? 7% is the voice, and uh, th yeah. some of it is the the way you say it, and uh, yeah, the eight, non 79, cues. 80 percent of it is the body language. So right. how, so when something yeah. is the voice part of it, or, or, mm -hmm. or the text part of it is such a small component, how do you, uh, how do you get context when so much of it is there? is communicated through other means. Uh, that's a good point. There is uh, nonverbal communication and uh -huh. uh, body language and everything else, which, uh -huh. uh, yes, that, that context is definitely being missed in uh -huh. the interaction. Uh, and, you know, maybe in time... I don't that need to put you on the spot. No, 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 no it's, a it's a fair point. Uh -huh. It's a fair point. No, no, so the um, so voice, you know, it, it conveys perhaps more information than just the text because some amount of emotion comes in. Maybe the next level of chatbots is video conferencing chat, video, conf video bots, for instance, yeah. where you're actually seeing a video of the person and then you make it more information. So I think it's, it's a progression. So with time, you know, we make it to that stage. Right now we're focusing on text because that's, uh, mm -hmm. that I think tech, at least in terms of NLP, I think the uh, technology is matured enough that you can recognize intents and recognize what a person is, uh, is wa wants to communicate in text. Voice, this, it's still not, 100% there yet, especially with accents and uh, background noise and everything else. Mm -hmm. And maybe, you know, in a year or two, it's going to improve is enough that uh, it's going to become mainstream and uh, there's going to be no ambiguities mm -hmm. when somebody says something that, uh, that the back end will understand it. Okay. So, yeah. Last question. Sure. Like, w uh, and obviously, you had a whole presentation uh, around this one. But what's like one key takeaway for the folks who perhaps were not able to attend your session? What, what's one of the key things? messages you'd like to communicate about chatbots and, 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 and where we're going with this? Right. So I think chatbots have t gone, come out of the infancy where we now know they're possible. And now it's, not the, it's now we're on the, the next phase of the intelligence uh, in chatbots. Mm -hmm. And for us, intelligence comes in a couple of different ways. One is by having more context, by having analytics to personalize the interactions with the, with the chatbot. Mm -hmm. And second is to have better design principles. So there are certain ways of designing the conversation, designing the dialogue that guides the user to the right resolution or to a good outcome. And that, that those design principles are slowly coming out. And we also, in my, in my talk, I covered a few such design principles, such as making sure that you're not leaving the conversation too open-ended. It has to be very guided and because the chatbot can't do everything. So th the user has to know what's possible with a chatbot, uh, what it can, can do, what it cannot do, what are the terms it understands. So there's a, there are techniques of guiding the user so that they ask questions or they give instructions in such a way the chatbot has a very high likelihood of understanding what the user just said. And that science is now, it's now still an art, I think. Eventually that's we become a science as well. So those are two places or two, I think, uh, dimensions that uh, where, where I think chatbots are going. More personalization and better design of chatbots themselves. If you ever come out with a chatbot that, that can... Uh Help to communicate better with teens, like, <laughs> let me well, give you a call. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> and thank you so much for coming in for sharing. Sure, thank and you for your, yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you.